Modern day science can trace some of its roots back to the days of alchemy, when people were trying to convert common metal like lead into gold. Dr. Magendran Gavinder is now reversing the process by turning science into magic, by getting his students to learn while they've been entertained. You'd never think that an astrophysicist could be so down to earth. So Jay Loshni went to find out what makes him tick. Fun and excitement are not words we'd normally associate with subjects like mathematics and physics. But Dr. Magendran Gavinder, also known as Dr. G, is an astrophysicist who's intent on changing the stereotype and making it as fun as possible. We dropped in on the scientist as he entertained and enthralled aspiring young engineering students. Right, so there was, that wasn't a joke when he said, I will be entertaining you now, that's exactly what I'll be doing. But using science to entertain you, it almost seems like it's impossible to do, but I will show you how. But more importantly, next year, I will be your lecturer. So if you're doing any of the engineering disciplines, whether it's mechanical engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering, you'd have to pass my course. It's simply called applied mathematics. I always bring along my liquid nitrogen. So what you're seeing here is a real cloud, sort of cloud that you see up in the, in the sky. You do that, Imagine what's happening there inside. It's seeing the super cooled nitrogen in there. It starts condensing. You have a liquid forming inside there. That's not the nitrogen, that's the vapor that's forming the liquid. Now the liquid starts to boil, just like water in a kettle. What happens? When water boils, it gives off steam. It's that vapor that fills the balloon up. Most people will call this magic. I've been watching you in awe. I've been watching you with this group of young people and you're just as excited and in the moment as they are. Where did that passion and interest in science come from? I was always curious as a child, but I think that was encouraged by my science teachers as well as my maths teachers during primary school as well as secondary school. Do you have a scientific family? My dad has an has a engineering type background. Uh, but he also has this whole idea of curiosity and is very good with his hands. Can I grab a biscuit? Yep. It's a very dangerous experiment, yep. One more. So what I wanted to do is take this biscuit. If you pop this into, say, uh, coffee or water, what would happen to the biscuit? It would break up, become soggy. It's very porous, it's tasty, but it's filled with air pockets. So I'm hoping the air pockets would freeze up and that when I take the biscuit out, there would be a reversal of that, or what I call phase change, right? Then you invert like this, take a sizable bite. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go, look at that. So again, then, you know, we all know that there's students who really enjoy maths and science. They do it at high school. They pass with A symbols and they do really well. They come to university and they're all geared up to taking it as a subject. And it's common knowledge that there's a big gap. What do you think is the problem? One of the major problems is they're too focused on actually obtaining the A's rather than actually learning the subject itself. So if you do enough past exam papers and you're familiar with those type of problems, you will definitely get those A's get to university and we're gonna ask you to build bridges and send rockets into space, that's not in the textbook. So you gotta to learn to think on your feet, think out of the box. What do you think is the solution? The solution is change the way you think, change the way you learn. And that's what I'm trying to do with the use of demonstrations and also a more holistic approach to actually teaching. So to show you that this is actually a 100 watt light bulb, it does work like this, yep. And now I'm gonna dunk this into you, the nitrogen, and I'm gonna set this on. Minus 196 on the outside, yep. And there we go. Oh. It does light up. Don't ever try this at home. This is very dangerous. What should teachers be doing in the class? What really needs to be done is to get in more, not so much experiments, but what I would call demonstrations. In the old days, you, you would do something called show and tell, up to, I think, grade three or four. My feeling is one should be doing show and tell right up to grade 12, or even university. Uh, students and teachers will complain there's not enough time in the, in the day to do these things. But one experiment a week, and that could change the face of physics and science in this country. So you are an astrophysicist, you're a scientist, and you're an entertainer, or you're an entertaining scientist, which is a very odd combo, like they worlds apart. Yes, it is. In fact, you're right. I mean, when I first got in here and people said, you know what, this is going to be a science talk, you notice the heads would drop immediately. And then at the end, you suddenly realize you can't get them out of the room. And that's basically what you want. That teacher can put on a performance. 
with a little bit more energy, a demonstration or two, or even the use of a computer, I think that's going to catch the kids' attention. They're going to look forward to going into class. Just travel very quickly, all right? Straw through a potato. Yeah. What inspires you? I like to live life on the edge. And I think a friend of mine once told me, you know, go big or go home. And I, I think I live by that motto. And, and also, I'm also inspired by my family. You must be the coolest dad. I hope so. <laughs> yes. But at the same time, I think uh, with them living around, being around science all the time, it could become daunting. But I don't expect that. This is also a very big issue with students coming to university, living the parents' dreams. I mean, we, we know that sort of thing. My parents expected when they came to graduation and that I wasn't graduate as an engineer. When they said astrophysicist, I think it was more of a surprise to them. So I'm hoping that my kids could surprise me in the same way. What would be your advice to aspiring young scientists or engineers or astrophysicists? We have lots of research groups in this country, in Africa itself as well, that can actually accommodate aspiring uh, individuals. So I think they should aim just to give off the best at all times and uh, yeah, and then and make the mark or leave the mark. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. I thought it was amazing. Like we learn all these theories and stuff at school, but then we actually saw them being applied and saw how amazing physics can be. The things that Dr. Gavin just showed us are pretty amazing. Compared to the things that we do in school, everything is really, really boring. Dr. Gavin actually taught me that there's a lot more to physics than actually what we learn in class. Like you do subject at school and stuff, people think it's really boring, not really that interesting. And then when you see it in practice, it's completely different story. It was so cool. It was it was really entertaining. Um, and like we moved from the back to the front because it was pretty interesting to see like everything put into perspective. Change the way you think and you can change the world. This is a philosophy that Dr. G lives by and he constantly and tirelessly strives to pass it on to the young students that he nurtures and develops.